Fennings Organic Vegetables is a, an organic vegetable farm. This industry is consumer driven. So we always adapted to the needs of the market and the needs of the market asked us to provide more food. And today uh, we employ, it's about 130, 150 people in the summer, in the winter 50. And we service 200 stores per week. Labor was always a bit of an issue. And as these immigrant waves came, uh, the older folks that don't speak English can't go work in many places. They go find a way to work on the farm. But on a farm, we are also a legitimate business and need staff that you can talk to. You need, you need people that have training. It's very, very hard to run a business and supply large companies that have big demands with a workforce that you can't talk to, you know? So we learned to say good morning in their language to, to build that bridge. And I, over the years, learned to say like good morning in the first five words in at least five or six or seven different languages that work for us. The downside to this workforce system is um, it, it's multi-leveled. You, we do have people in the country that have that are afraid of these people. Or when our people for the first time came to the farm and they went shopping in the little town here and they went into a store, people called the police and said, oh, what's going on? And then what the police officer offered and uh, suggested take the people to all the businesses and introduce them. So we did this and that ended that problem. And now the people are so, the workers are so, part of the community that when I go to the bank in the wintertime, the bank ladies ask, hey, when are, men come, when are the men coming back? Whenever they come in to deposit their check, it's so lively in the bank. So there's also uh, good, good things. Um, and so we need to, on a very fine, subtle level, uh, tweak these things so that some of these prejudices that we in this country have um, aren't there. One thing I wanted to mention is the, the migrant workers every year have to go through the process of paperwork and medical check and police check and all those things like any other immigrant into Canada. So uh, I came to Canada in 1981. I needed medical check, police check, whatever checks they needed to be. And these men come every year and they need this every year. So the Canadian government has a track record of police checks annually on workers for 10, 15 years. And that should, in my opinion, be adequate to, alert, to give those people permanent residency. That's, the, that's one thing that I would like to say to the big system, say, guys, you have the information on hand. Just give those people a permanent residency. They, some of them will run away and work in construction and will not work on farms anymore. But a lot of the men will be able to come in, work for the summer, and travel back home in the winter anyway. So it would be, very low, it would be a very low-risk thing for the Canadian government to, to give these people permanent residency. It would make things so much easier on an administrative level. The Canadian system has to em employ so many people just to fi finish the paperwork or fill out the paperwork that was done for 10 times already. So, you know, that's one thing I would really suggest they, they could do, but then some workers you lose, they go and work on construction because that pays more. But the thing is farming would love to pay more, but the consumer doesn't want to pay more for the food. It's very pragmatic. And uh, to the class, you're all young people going out. Don't expect the world to wait for you when you are done. And when you're out there, it's like in sales, you are selling yourself, me, I'm selling food. And if I'm going to some store, he says, 
I have three other vendors, I don't need you. Then it is for number one, how you take that and how you respond to that, that in the end will open the door, even though the door was closed. If you learn how to open doors, you will be successful.